One of the biggest challenges when designing a flow cytometry experiment, especially a large panel, is managing spillover. This video tutorial will show you how you can minimize your spectral overlap and compensation issues with FluoroFinder. FluoroFinder has a lot of intelligence baked in for product selection. It prevents selection of multiple products in the same detector, it blocks use of adjacent detectors with excessive spillover, and now it provides spillover pop-ups to guide your color selection. As an example, I will be taking a basic T-Reg panel and choosing products based on the information that is provided in these pop-ups. In Step 1 and 3 of the Panel Design Utility, you can hover over a color to view its spillover pop-up. This pop-up contains details about a fluorochrome's excitation and emission spectral profile, as well as its impact on other channels. The dashed line displays the wavelengths of light that excite eFluor 450, allowing the user to see where the laser line lies within the excitation curve. The dynamic emission curve on display is normalized to the laser line and gives a visual of the degree of fluorescent transmission captured by your filter set. eFluor 450 has an emission maximum at about 445 nanometers, and since its emission peak is narrow, has little spectral overlap into other channels. We use the phrase percentage filter value to indicate what percentage of this bandpass filter is covered by the emission curve. The pop-up will also display other detectors with significant percentage filter values. In this case, with eFluor 450, there are no other filters with significant signal. As you start choosing your products, pop-ups may include percentage filter values for multiple fluorochromes. Now you have the ability to view all of this information from different vendors in one place. FluoroFinder enables you to predict spectral overlap for your fluorochromes of interest and filter combinations on your exact cytometer. By providing you with information about the optical background for a particular detector, you can more intelligently select your color combinations. During your experimental design and analysis, you may want to consider other factors we didn't discuss that can contribute to your optical background, such as cell autofluorescence and nonspecific staining. For more information on these topics, as well as spillover and compensation in general, please check out our resource page. If you want to get in touch with us, please use one of the following email addresses and we'll get back to you shortly.